Praise the Lord. It's a beautiful day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. I'm so glad you could join us this week. I pray that you have been blessed, that the Lord is gracious, and he does nothing but give good gifts to his children. Amen. You know, I'd like to talk with us very seriously today. You know, troublesome times are here. We're going through a lot of disappointments. We're going through a lot of heartaches right now. We're losing loved ones to death. We're having families divided. Part of them going one way and part going another. Fathers and mothers are fussing and fighting amongst each other. I'd like to ask this question. Are you ready? Are you ready to meet Jesus if he should call you today? Have you truly been born again? You know, so many people have been deceived. And they think because they've went down to the, to the water's edge that they've been baptized or they've joined the church or they've cried their heart out when they have went to an altar. And they got a little peace. But then when we get up, we go on. For a little while, you know, with a little bit of joy. Then all of a sudden things happen. And we forget about where we've been at the altar. Amen. John 5 and 39 says like this. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Amen. He says, search the scriptures. In other words, read the scriptures to see if we're lining up with what the word says. Sometimes people can deceive us, and sometimes we deceive ourselves. But Jesus says in Matthew 24 and 44, he says, Therefore be you ready, for in such an hour that you think not the Son of Man cometh. You know, he said in one place he's coming back as a thief in the night. In other words, he'll be coming back. When people are unaware, when they're not looking for him. But he said, blessed are those that are watching. Are you watching for the Lord to come back? Are you expecting him to come back soon? Or are we putting off things to a later date? Thinking, oh, well, we've got plenty of time. But you know, only God in heaven knows when that's going to be. Be ye therefore ready, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. You know, one place he said this, he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days when the Son of Man comes. See, they were eating and drinking and partying and marrying and giving in marriage, not thinking about what was ahead thinking about what satisfied the flesh you know the pride of life the pride of the eyes and the lust of the flesh that's all that's in the world and so many times that's where the flesh goes amen but you know I find where it says in John 3 Start with the first verse, he said, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. 
And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless that blood's been applied, we cannot see. Our Father in heaven, we cannot be in heaven to live with Jesus. Except a man be born again. See, the blood of Jesus is what cleanses us. It's what washes us. But Nicodemus said unto him, he said, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter in the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. It's our spirit man that needs born again. It's our spirit man that needs to be reconciled back to the Father. Amen. Jesus said, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Amen. You ask a lot of people, have you been born again? Now look at you. What? Okay, that shouldn't be. There's enough people going about preaching. There's a lot of people going about saying that they're evangelists, they're pastors, they're people saying, I am a Christian, I'm a soul winner. Well, what are we telling the lost and dying world? Shame on us if we're not lifting up the name of Jesus and telling folks how to be born again. Amen. Let's not let the Lord come back and find us slumbering and sleeping and procrastinating. Amen. Let's go to Luke, the 14th chapter. Okay? Let's see what the word says. Start with the 16th verse. He says, Then said he unto him, A man, a certain man made a great supper and bade many. And he sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are ready. Oh, hallelujah, I tell you what, uh, that marriage supper in heaven is almost ready. It's almost time for the Lord to come and take his bride away. Amen. 18th verse says it like this, And they all, with one consent, began to make excuses. Oh, have we been there? The first man said, I bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. Have me excused. Another says, I have bought five oxen. Five yoke of oxen. And he says, and I go to prove them. I pray you have me excused. How many buys horses or oxen or, or whatever and don't uh, check them out first? Amen. Another said, I've married a wife. Therefore, I cannot come. Oh, we can have all kinds of excuses. If we don't have any that we can think of real quickly, the devil will hand us a basket full. Just pick one out. Amen. But the word says that there's none excused. No, not one. The 21st verse says this. So the servant came. And he showed the Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor, the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. Yet there is room. Amen. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go ye into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of these men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. You know, when we refuse God, when we don't come to him and, we'll, and be born again, washed clean in the blood of his precious son Jesus, then he's going to say, depart from me. 
I never knew you. Amen. Children, we can all find all kinds of excuses. But you know, people will say, well, I just don't uh, get out much. I don't see anybody to be able to tell them about Jesus. Well, honey, just about everyone has a telephone. Amen. Just about everyone has to go to the grocery store. Or they go out to pay their utility bills. You can always get a word in for the Lord. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. How easy is it to say, Jesus loves you? It don't cost you nothing. Amen? It don't cost us nothing to say, Jesus loved you enough to die for you. Folk, it's time that we got off our stool of do nothing and start working for the Lord. Amen? Have we truly truly been born again if we've come to him and we've been drawn by that Holy Spirit to an altar repentance and we truly repent yes we can say we're born again and we become a new creature we come Become a new creature that has never been before. Amen. Our past is our past. It's gone. Amen. But look here. There's so many people that want to go their own way. Amen. They uh, look unto others. They, they look to self to take care of things instead of committing themselves to the Lord. Amen. In Luke, the 16th chapter, very familiar, and I know many people have heard it preached on many, many times. But this should be awakening for a lot of people. Luke 16, starting with the 19th verse, he said, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked the sores. And that's a pretty pitiful state to be in. But this rich man was only looking out for himself. Amen. He wasn't looking for the Christ. He wasn't looking to do good. Amen. It came to pass. That the beggar died. And was carried. By the angels. Into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died. And was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes. Being in torments. And sith Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried, and he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. And likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside this, there's a, between us there's a great gulf, so that, they would, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from hence. Children, when death comes, it's too late. If you've been born again, oh, you get to live forever with our precious Savior. Amen. We'll be comforted. We will be heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ. Amen. 
But if you've not been born again, the devil will be the one that's going to keep gouging and punching and you'll be in the lake of fire which burneth forever and forever. Then the rich man said, I pray thee thy poor father that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And the rich man said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And Abraham said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded. The one rose from the dead. Amen. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. It takes the precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash our sins away. Amen. Then we can become heir and joint heir with Jesus. When we're air and joint air with Jesus, we have everything he has. Amen. Think about it. Just think about it. Jesus came seeking to save that which was lost. And we were all lost at one time in need of a Savior. Amen. But Jesus came, and he became the ultimate sacrifice. Because in the Old Testament, the blood of goat, goats, uh, they, it could not. It could not suffice. And they would do this once a year. And you would have to go once a year to have your sins forgiven. But Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. So much more, so much better. We don't have to keep going back and having the blood applied. All we've got to do when we make a mistake is, Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me. I am sorry. And he's right there. He's waiting for us. Amen. He's waiting for us when we, when we fail. He's there waiting. His grace and his mercies. Amen. He says his mercies are new every day. Amen. God is so good that he gave his only begotten son to go through the sufferings, to go through the beatings. They pulled his beard out with of his face. They put that crown of thorns on his head. And it wasn't little bitty briars. He was beaten until he was unrecognizable. And he did it for you and I. Let's make sure that we're born again. That we've had that blood blood excuse me, that blood applied because that's what it's going to take, the blood of Jesus, amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father except by me. His Spirit draws us, amen. And we can come and be forgiven. We can come and be born again. But we are being slowful. We are procrastinating. We're saying another time. I'll wait till next weekend. Amen. I'll wait till the revival comes and then I'll go. No, you know what? We may wait one second too late. Because as a tree falls, so shall it lay. If you die in your sins, that's where you're going to be. 
But when that blood of Jesus is applied to our soul, amen, oh, hallelujah, and it washes our sins away. And when we leave this walks of life, we can enter in to the rest and peace of our loving Savior, amen, to be there forevermore. Isn't that wonderful? And he gave us the instructions on how to be saved, how to be born again. In Romans 10, he tells us very plainly, He said, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Amen. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. Amen. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich. And to all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. You say, well, I believe, but 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 how's it how's this gonna take place? Don't try to analyze the word of God. The word of God says what it means, it means what it says. If we truly, truly believe the word of God, there'd be a lot of difference in our lives, wouldn't it? Amen. We've got too many doubt and Thomases. We got too many that will say, Well, I would, but oh so and so blah don't you can't blame nobody. No. There's not gonna be no excuses when we stand before the Father in heaven. None. No excuses. We cannot blame nothing on anybody else. We have to own our own. But when we get our sins under the blood, we've been forgiven, we've been born again. Oh, what a difference when we stand before the throne of God. I want to hear him say, well done, my faithful servant. Welcome into your rest. Amen. If I can just look upon the face of the one that died for me and bless his holy name, it'll be worth every mile that I've traveled. It'd be worth every sermon that I've ever preached. It'd be worth every song that I've ever sung. Every heartache that I've ever gone through. It'd be worth it all. Because Jesus has been with me all the way. He said, I'll never leave you. All I've got to do is call upon his name. And I can feel his presence. And oh, what a sweet presence it is when he comes on the scene. The name of Jesus that's higher than any name. Can't you just look inside your heart, search yourself? Repenting is a daily thing. Because, see, every day is a new day. And when we goof up, mess up, it may be a small thing, it may be a big thing. But he is faithful to watch over his word. He said he would that we would not sin. But if we did, he said we'd have an advocate with the Father. He's faithful to forgive. Amen. 
Jesus is our advocate. He's our lawyer. Amen. I can just hear him say, Father, they belong to us. Amen. He's there making intercession for you and I. What are we doing for him? Hmm. Think about it. Are we going and telling our loved ones about Jesus? Or are we saying, I'm just too embarrassed. Uh, I can't speak well. I can't do this. I can't do Well, you know, I can't never did do nothing. But we can open up our mouth. And we can say, how is it between you and the Lord? Are you ready to meet Jesus if he calls your name? How simple is that? Well, I'd be embarrassed. Well, let me tell you something, folk. When they hung Jesus on the cross, think about it. He hung there in shame because he had taken our sins upon his own body and nailed him to the tree. Amen. And when he was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You know, we don't have understanding about a lot of things, but we can trust Jesus. Amen. We can trust him with everything that we have. That's one thing about it. When Jesus, when we let him be in control, everything works out for the good. Everything works out the way it should. But when we take things to the Lord and we say, bring it back then, as if we can do it better than he can, we get in trouble. But here's the thing. Let's make sure that we are ready to meet the bridegroom when the call comes out. We can't say, give me a few more minutes. Uh, let me kneel and pray before uh, you call me? No, uh-uh. It don't work that way. When Jesus calls our name, that's it. Let's tell our loved ones about the love of Christ. Let's tell them, you must be born again. You must be cleansed from all sin. He's coming back for a church. That's made herself ready. See, that means he don't make us ready. He's already paid the price. But he's gave us the instructions on how to be ready. Amen. We've got work to do. We've got something we've got to do. We've got to be prepared for his coming. Are you looking for him? Or are you saying, wait a little longer? Please, Jesus. Let's not waste any more time because time is at hand. And when that trumpet sounds, that's going to be the time when it's, he said, those that are dead in Christ will rise first. And those that are alive and remain will be caught up in a moment and twinkling of an eye. And be changed. Amen. From, immor from mortality to immortality. We'll be like Jesus then. Amen. Oh ain't that wonderful. Isn't that wonderful. I hope you've got something out of the message today. Please go tell somebody about the love of Jesus. You can start with your kin folks. Start with your family. Amen. And you know it just takes stepping out once or twice. Amen. Lift up the name of Jesus. Let us rejoice. Be glad. 
Give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Thank you for joining us this week. This is Evangelist Lucy Lowe, Post Office Box 133, Grimsley, Tennessee, 38565, or Lucy Lowe, 1944, at gmail.com. We welcome any comments you'd have, and if you need prayer, you can just contact us, amen, and we'd be honored to pray for you and with you, amen. So until next week, I'm going to say, we love you. And God loves you. He loved you enough that he sent his son to die for you. Are you born again?